Hey you guys, good morning and welcome to another uh, Pride and Grit Spouse Spotlight. I'm super excited for uh, the person we're going to talk to today. Her name is Lindsay Smith. Um, and you may have, uh, if you're on Instagram, you may have seen some of her, some of her work and some of the creative things she's into. So I'm really excited to bring you another perspective on um, what a spouse's path might look like in this military life. So let me bring her up here and uh, we will get started. So Lindsay, welcome. And we are so happy to talk to you today. So I would love for you to just um, start off by telling everyone a little bit about kind of your military spouse journey, your path. And then we'll talk a little bit about kind of what you're into and and, um, and what you're doing right now. So go ahead and take away. Um, let's see. Uh, so I met my husband actually um, once he was already a veteran um, and he's working for like a veteran owned company uh, with a bunch of veterans um, and they're contractors. So my journey is probably not the same as every like active duty spouse, but in a sense, he is still active duty because he doesn't have control over his schedule, <laughs> over his location. He gets deployed, um, you know, like wherever the army special forces groups are, like that's where he is because that's what he does. So um, I, I don't have like the, you know, the exact same journey, but I mean, I'm definitely dealing with all of the same things. You know, I'm here at Fort Bragg, he's deployed. <laughs> right, right. Yep. No, absolutely. It definitely, um, I think that being military connected, I think is really, um, I think often how we talk about it. And and to your point, like that some of the challenges certainly professionally are, are, are similar. So I'd love to talk a little bit about, um, let's first start off with kind of what you're into right now, and then we'll kind of come back around to, um, to your, your story and kind of how you arrived at that. So tell us a little bit about um, the business that you have right now that you're working in Fort Bragg. Yeah, so um, I started a business called The Charcuterie Chick, and that's me. <laughs> um, and basically I make um, cheese boards, grazing boards, charcuterie boards, whatever you wanna call them. Um, they pair really well, oftentimes with wine or beer. Um, and traditionally it's like a wooden board, but I kind of started like a to-go box um, that has just been like my biggest seller. Um, so I deliver them like all over Cumberland County. Um, it's kind of like a date night in a box. You basically just need to add wine or beer or sparkling water, whatever you're, whatever you're into. Um, and it's really cool because it's a little bit of everything without having to go to the store and buy all of those things and have the cost and the waste. Yeah, no, I th th and I think it's what I what I loved is I started to see you kind of kind of show up in some of the places I was visiting online. Um, yeah, is you know lots of different people being able to use it in lots of different ways. You know, couples. Yeah, you know, I, I saw um, a realtor friend who I think that's how I originally found you who um, who had started using it for her clients or had had one I think even delivered to her office and and so it was like it was just something kind of fresh and new and and you know, maybe it's to your point, something I wouldn't maybe, you know, spend the time or the money to buy all the pieces, but, but it's great to have, have it something I can just pick up and, you know, and take on a, take, you know, on a picnic or take, you know, for an event. I know some people have mentioned Definitely. also being able to have them for events and things like that. So it sounds like it's, yeah, I've been really fortunate. Um, my best friend here is a realtor and um, she kind of got me in with the realtor crowd. And that's been one of my like biggest like sellers, you know, they're apparently they make really great closing gifts for clients. <laughs> the first night in their new house, they don't know where their dishes are. Jeez. Everything's still packed. Well, here it is, your to-go box. All you need is like a bottle of wine and you're good. No, it's brilliant. Like I would have loved to have that on any of our closings. That would have been so handy. <laughs> right? Um, I remember our first night in our house, I knew where none of my dishes right. were. Yes. <laughs> yes. And at some point you're like, no more takeout. <laughs> Oh, I can only eat Taco Bell so many times. Right. So let's talk, let's back up a step. Cause I like, I love what you're doing, but what I also loved about it was, um, you know, like you said, your, your path is a little bit different as a, as a retired, um, military spouse, but, but has some of those same challenges. So I'd love to talk a little bit about all the things that kind of led you to where you are now. Um, because I think that's a really interesting part of your journey as well. So can you talk a little bit about your professional background and kind of yeah. your decision point to make this pivot into this other business? Yeah. Um, so I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. Um, I'm from California. I got my bachelor's and master's degree there. I did my 3,000 hours as an intern there. <laughs> 3,000. a lot. Um, it is a ton. 
you know, so I, I had set up practice there. I was working for the county. I, I was in the forensics field and I was really successful. Um, and my husband uh, was working uh, as a contractor there. Well, at the time he was my boyfriend and then my fiance. <laughs> then we got married and like a month, maybe six weeks later, he was like, hey, guess what? <laughs> We're going to move to North Carolina. I was like, we are. Welcome to mill life. <laughs> And I was like, when are we moving? And he's like, next month. And I was like, oh, uh, okay. So, you know, fast forward, we get here, which was a journey with two dogs and a trailer. Um, and I applied for my license here thinking like, well, you know, this state only requires 2000 hours. So surely they'll license me. I have like above and beyond the professional experience. Well, they won't license me here. They have a really archaic rule about like 200 hours that they require to be really specific oh. that nobody does anymore. So I don't have those specific 200 hours and they also won't let you get just those 200 hours. You have to redo your entire internship. Pass. So <laughs> I was like, heck no, mm -hmm. that's not happening. Right. So you know, I became kind of like what I always thought I wanted to be. I was like a stay at home dog mom and like the house was clean and all the meals were prepped and cooked and the dogs were happy. And I felt really unfulfilled yeah. and bored and cause we don't have two legged children, sure. you know? So, I mean, I think that maybe is more fulfilling, you know, you're contributing to like these little person's lives, you know, and that is a job in and of itself. And it's not really the same thing with dogs. Sure. And, you know, ultimately, um, now we're on one, one income. And so, you know, losing over $80,000 a year is a big deal. So I finally, you know, my friend was like, you know, you do these things, your friends love it, your family love it, your neighbors love it. Everybody asks you to make one for them. Why don't you turn it into a business? So I was like, I don't know anything about business. I don't want to own, <laughs> I don't want to own a business. Like, how do you even start a business? Right. Like, what do I do? Um, and you know, my dad owns a business yeah, and I saw his struggles, you know, and I never wanted to be a business owner. I wanted to go to work nine to five. Like they have my health insurance. <laughs> they have my malpractice insurance. Do you know what I mean? And like, I don't know anything about running a business and I, I just kind of started it and I am learning as I go. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, it, it I think it's so, um, I won't say typical necessarily, cause I don't know if it is typical, but I don't think it's uncommon, right? That. That. Oh, no, I've heard like so many women that I've been able to connect with, like the own businesses in the area that kind of started them out of necessity mm -hmm. like that and knew nothing about business and were fortunate to like have people help them along the way. And they've been like really great to me, you know, like telling me like from their learning, you know, mm -hmm. um, imparting their wisdom on me. Yeah. And I, I think that's just kind of what we do for each other. I think, no, I think you're absolutely right. I'm curious as a, and, and this is just me not sort of knowing because I'm not in a profession that has to be licensed, but it is, is there a difference for, um, you know, someone who is married to a retired service member versus an active duty in terms of some of the, the licensure um, improvements, if you will, that have been made recently where you can kind of cross state lines and it's a little bit easier. Do those things not necessarily apply to retired spouses? I didn't, I didn't know if that applied. So I'm not sure which professions they apply to, but active duty or veteran, they do not require to license marriage and family therapists. Okay. So that particular one. Yeah. I asked the board. Yeah, no, I'm sure. I'm sure you ran it down. It's just, it's so, it's, it's such a bummer because to be honest, if anybody needs like a licensed marriage and family counselor in their area, like it's probably the mill spouse community. Like we could definitely. Yes. And guess what my specialty is? PTSD and substance use. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I was super frustrated. Sure. And you know, if I'm being really honest, my husband doesn't have a degree. He doesn't even have an associate's degree. And so at first I was really resentful that like, because he makes more money than I do, that he dictates where we get to go. Right. When I spent like six years in school, three years as an intern, like all this like blood, sweat and tears, right. you know, and he <laughs> was like, are you serious? Yeah. No, I think, but well, and I think, just how it is. I think that the piece of that, that was really important that like that I hear and what you're saying is this ability for, for anyone who's kind of in a profession where they're struggling to kind of find a foothold wherever they are, 
is how do you make that decision to pivot? And what I like what I heard you say is partially it was about needing, you know, needing to you didn't say identity, but that's kind of what I hear, right? Needing to have something that is your own and needing to to be out of the house and needing to um, you know, find something that gets you excited, right? And and it and it I sounds like, yeah, you it. needed those yeah, things. I couldn't just cook and clean and walk the dogs. Right. No. And I think that I was listening. I don't know if you follow independent, but I was listening um, last week. They had an interview with Angela Duckworth, Duck, Duckworth, who wrote the book Grit. And and one of the things she was talking about in there is kind of, you know, where does where does grit come from and how does that work? But one of the things that I really resonated that sounds a lot like what you're saying is, is this need to um, like to find both something that you're passionate about, like, you know, you're really good at this at these boards and, and you have this creativity that gives you this creative outlet. So you have both kind of the interest and the passion and, and the ability, obviously, like you have the capability of pursuing that. Um, and so it's both a passion and a purpose because it's now giving you this thing that you can do for others and it's giving you your creative outlet. Um, so I think it's just, it's a really, I think, creative way to, to take a circumstance that, you know, a lot of people could, could find themselves in and figuring out how do I pivot that based on something I'm good at um, and and build a business. So yeah, and it definitely took me a long time to come up with it. Absolutely. Um, yeah. No. You know, I I I didn't do it like right away. I spent you know the first few months trying to get my license, then getting rejected, and filing an appeal and fighting with them to give me my license and like all the paperwork that took and like their board only meets every so often. So I mean, I spent like the first six seven months we were here doing that. Right. Um, and you know, I was really upset and depressed and lonely, you know, and mm -hmm. I wasn't getting out of the house. Sure. I had no reason to get out of the house and I didn't know anybody. Right. And so it wasn't until I started meeting like other like spouses, you know, military wives that have had to give up like their successful careers and come up with something new that I was like, well, shoot, if everybody else can do it, like, I guess maybe, <laughs> maybe I should stop pouting and start doing. Right, right. No, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I think you could easily go either way, right? And, and to be able to, to have a skill set that you could then transition, I think is awesome. So talk a little bit about kind of the business side of that, because I know you're not alone in, in having that initial reservation of like, I don't know how to do this. So how do I jump in with I two feet? I still don't. Yeah, no, I know, right? Like, I think a lot of us that, that, you know, run all different kinds of ventures don't necessarily walk into it with a really deep skill set in it but we you know we have the sort of the perseverance and we have the passion and we want to do it and we and we just dig in and figure it out but what have been kind of some of your key lessons learned if someone was you know in a similar position and ready to kind of get off the sofa and maybe start something what would be some things that um, that you would just recommend to them to think about so Definitely, I would say um, there's a, a Fayetteville Women's Business Center downtown, and they give kind of like crash courses on like how to, like anything business related, how to open a business, how to file for your LLC, awesome. like how to open a business bank account, and then like really like far yeah, yeah. ahead steps, right. <laughs> which I haven't even taken all of those <laughs> classes with. <laughs> but um, I mean, I went there and I was like, oh man, okay, I have a lot of things to do. I had like made social media accounts, you know? And I thought that, okay, great, I'm a business. Right. <laughs> so I filed for my LLC, you know? You have to open like a business bank account, mm -hmm. you know? Apparently there are taxes. Right. <laughs> um, I met with the CPA. I downloaded this like app that tracks all my mileage. I keep all my receipts, you know? Just mm -hmm. like things that I've kind of like picked up as I've gone along you know, getting business insurance, right. um, just all kinds of things. Yeah, no, there's, there are so many details. And I feel like every time you uncover a layer of detail, you'll find a new layer of detail underneath it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Every time I ask a question of like, okay, like about like one specific thing, I feel like the answer is like, there's three more things that I need to do. Right. <laughs> right. So, but I, I kind of just take them as they come, right. you know, if I, made a whole list of like the 50 things I had to do, I would be so overwhelmed, yeah. you know? And so I just, you know, if I have time that day, if I don't have a ton of deliveries or a big party that I'm catering, I see like, what are the like simplest ones that I can check off the list, you know, or if there's a really important one and I have a couple days, like that's the one I focus on. Right. No, that's no, that's, that's smart. What, um, you know, to kind of in that vein, what have been some of your, I guess, um, like your, 
the, the best things about doing this, right? Like the pieces where you step out and go, oh, that was it, you know? Like what, what does that look like for you? Well, definitely the fact that it even is a thing because <laughs> I was 100% certain that like I didn't know how to run a business. I had no business starting a business, you know? And that like that this wasn't the area for it. Like my price point would be too high. It's too bougie for Fayetteville, you know? Everybody's gonna think, oh gosh, this California girl, you know, and her cheese, you know? <laughs> But so the fact that it even exists and that people like it um, is a victory in and of itself. Right. Um, you know, and and I underestimated Fayetteville because actually what I'm doing is kind of filling a, a gap, mm. which is really cool. And I get that feedback all the time, which is one of those victories, you know, like, this is so awesome. Nobody else is doing this. Like, I'm so glad I found you. Like, that feels really good. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And to be able to contribute financially, you know. My husband had really just came to me and he was like, Hey, you know, we're basically still living like we're a two income household and we can't do that anymore. And I was like, Hmm, well, I don't want to change my lifestyle. So I guess we're going to be a two income household, you know? And so the fact that like I am contributing and the bank account is going up, like that feels really good. And like, he actually told me he was proud of me, which is like, not really a thing. He doesn't talk about feelings or anything mushy. And he was like, babe, I'm so proud of you. And I was like, Oh, that's so funny for a, like for a counselor to <laughs> oh yeah no I married the guy that won't tell me how he feels That's... ever and he doesn't like it when I ask him so how does that make you feel <laughs> so do you think I'm curious like now that you've sort of ripped off the band-aid on the business side does this you know what what I see a lot is or what I've heard a lot is people you know they'll do one business not realizing it actually becomes this building block for this later business that they want. Do, do you feel like now that you've sort of ripped off the bandaid and you've gone down this road that you'd ever, you know, if you ever go back to private practice, would you open your own practice? Would you kind of create your own business there or no? No, I wouldn't. Um, that's just like, honestly, I, so I, I definitely, I, I did this out of necessity right? and I'm really glad I did it because it's something that's out of my comfort zone and that I found out that I'm good at and I enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. But if I were to ever go back to, to being able to like, if we ever live in a state again, where I can actually be a, a therapist, right. private practice isn't really for me. Okay. Yeah, I'm um, just curious. You know, that <laughs> I, I'd rather be in the trenches. Mm -hmm. Like I want to work for like the county or like you know, public ah, mental health. Gotcha. Uh, okay. I used to work in the jail, you know, okay. like that's where Different my focus lies. Yep. No, that makes, that makes total sense. Um, yeah, no, I like, I just, I really love your story because I think it just shows how, you know, you take those, as you said, like one step at a time and you get to grow kind of one step at a time through this process and you're giving, you know, giving something to the community. And I, you know, there's, um, I don't know, like we've lived in Fayetteville too, so I can, I can absolutely see both your reservation, but I can also see that it's such a military friendly community and so many awesome, you know, businesses that I think love to support military connected businesses that I'm sure I that's have, been like, found that to be through and through like a hundred percent. And I was really like, um, surprised isn't the right word, but I was, I, I guess a little, yeah. you know, um, about how supportive the other, you know, military connected businesses and just families, you know, customers are. Um, and it's been really like, uh, like heartwarming. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's so cool. I absolutely. Love yeah. Um, so <laughs> tell me if folks wanted to find you, well, first, is there anything else that I didn't ask that you wanted to talk about? I don't think so. Other than the fact of, you know, like getting out of your comfort zone is really scary and like trying something new is really scary. And I didn't do it for longer than I should have not done it because I was afraid to fail. Like I'm kind of a type A like perfectionist, like I don't do failure. Right. And I was really scared to fail, but I realized that like, okay, what's the worst that could happen? Nobody buys anything. Okay. I'll eat the cheese, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, so the worst that could happen is that I feel okay, but like nothing catastrophic is going to come from that. And when I finally did it, I was like, wow, I should have done this a long time ago. No, I think, you know, but I think that, you know, so like, I guess if I could add anything, it would be like, don't, don't let fear hold you back if you want to try something. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great, great piece of advice to, to wrap up on. Um, so if you want to just tell everyone where they can find you, if they're local to Fayetteville, and then if they just want to kind of follow your journey so they know where you end up next, um, go ahead and let us know where to do that as well. Yeah. So, um, I'm working on a website. Um, I'm making it myself, so it's taken a little while. Um, 
I'm not the greatest with technology, so uh, you can only imagine. <laughs> um, but right now I'm on Facebook, so it's uh, the charcuterie chick. And I'm on Instagram, it's charcuterie underscore chick. Um, and then as far as finding me around, I am doing workshops at Cornerstone Design Company downtown. Yes. Um, or Hummingbird Candle Company, like it's the, the same place. So I'm doing a class there um, and at Dirtbag. Okay. And I might be doing one at another brewery downtown next month, although that's not official yet, yeah. so I can't say anything. So I, I know we were going to wrap up, but I wanted to, I forgot about your workshop. So talk for a minute about like where that came about, because I thought that was such a neat idea. Yeah. So one of the things that kind of like as I've been doing this, um, that's been really popular is like group date nights. Yeah. So like almost like I mean, wine and paint. Really fun. <laughs> It's a really fun date night, you know, like you build a board, you get to eat it, you know, you can pair it with beer, with wine, you talk with your friends. And so I basically like kind of like coach people through building one and I talk about pairing and like people really like that. Yeah. So, you know, I've had like three or four couples do it. And then um, someone reached out to me about collaborating, like, would you do a workshop? And I was like, mm. yeah, I guess like that's not that far of a jump, sure. you know, Um so that's just kind of how that came about. And so now I'm doing workshops with like 10 couples um, where we literally step by step, I teach them how to build a board and like kind of all the elements that go on the board, how to like present them visually so that it's like Instagram worthy. <laughs> and um, I talk about pairing, you know, are you a red wine, a white wine mm -hmm. drinker, a beer drinker? Are you a non-alcoholic drinker? Like I can kind of, you know, give advice about what to put with what. Yeah. So, and everybody gets a cheat sheet and, you know, like a picture with their board so they can recreate it at home. Right. No, it's just, and it's, just, like I said, it's, it is just something different, right? Like it's just a different way for us to, to connect with the people. It's more of like an experience yeah, no. than just going to like dinner and a movie. Sure. Like you're make you get to like kind of create your own food and it's like a, you know, you go to like a paint and sip or yeah, whatever. Like absolutely. everybody makes the same painting, but they all come out different. Yeah. It's the same thing. Right. Yes. No. It's just a cheese. I know. I like, I love it. I think that's just a, that was a, I think a really creative twist to, to just give you, um, you know, a different, a different way to kind of express that, that skill set and, and, and show that to other people. So I, I, I forgot about that. I read that. I thought that was such a neat idea. So we will put all the links for you in the video so everybody can easily find you. Oh cool, yeah. We look, forward, Follow me. we look forward to uh, following your journey. So we appreciate you being here with us today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Okay, guys. So um, that was super fun. We um, we love people who are just kind of trying new things and going out of their comfort zone and and figuring out um, you know how to carve a path. That's what we're all about talking about here. So we love the spotlights, and we're really glad that you joined us. So um, if you want to follow us on um, YouTube, you can see all the spotlights we've done as well as on our website. So if you want to check out more. Hit us up there and uh, take a peek at those. And we will talk to you guys next time. Thanks so much.